All right, time for another Nerdy Version podcast. Coming off of what I, my modus operandi, which is uh, have two good sets and then go to the open mic at the end of the night and blow it. <laughs> Just eat it. Could have, could have ended the night feeling like a king. Instead, I went and did a combination of trying new material and uh, trying to uh, trying a uh, to perform a different way, and it just completely fell flat. Always great, because God forbid I end my night on a high note. God forbid I get out while it's while it's good. But on the other hand, um, I need the failure. That's what I keep learning. I need the failure. The failure is, without the failure, I can't get to the next step, which is usually more failure. So if I had to do it over again, I would have done the same thing. So that's nice. That's very nice. That feeling and dealing with that, wonderful, wonderful feeling. What else is happening? Uh, well, continuing to try to eat healthy. I had more of the udon noodles, which are, I think there's too much sugar in them. And the teriyaki sauce, there's too much salt in that. So there were a few fleeting moments of happiness this week that, that I would like to apologize to my cholesterol level for. Here's the thing I was working on on stage. Here's, here's what I was dealing with. Here's what I want to talk to you about. I really hate handshakes. Uh, why do I hate them? Well, the germ thing is the biggest thing. How do we come out of a pandemic and still want to go back to handshaking? How do we were just... It's, I don't know, it's like, it's like somebody throws you off the side of a building and somehow you survive. And the very next thing you say is, hey, you want to go skydiving? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Give me a minute. Let's take a knee. Let's take a knee. Let's take a breather. We were just <laughs> through this. Why? Why are people so obsessed with it? Why? What, what? It's like we've been ingrained. Oh, you you know, you have to shake someone's hand to be polite. Who cares about polite anymore? I don't want polite. I just want decent and honest. I think if somebody, maybe what it is is that it's just, I guess it used to be that a handshake was a legally binding thing hundreds of years ago. No, we shook hands. Oh, well, shook hands. I guess uh, guess the the house is yours. He shook his hand. And then I think at some point somebody somebody came up with the idea of going, of the the person saying, oh, we, we shook hands on it. And the other person said, no, we didn't. And then they all went, well, there's... There's no way to prove this. I don't think this is very, I don't think this is a very binding legal document. We're going to have to, we're going to have to step up our game here. Write something down and then sign it. So yeah, the, the germ thing bothers me about the shaking of hands. The other thing that bothers me is that just the, the BS. Usually, It feels to me like when somebody wants to shake my hand, what they really, they want something. Because if they don't want something, you notice how when somebody doesn't want something from you, they don't shake your hand. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, how are you? That's it, that's the extent. But it's like, hi, I'm I'm Jim, nice to to meet you. Then suddenly we're in the process of 
touching the palms of our hands together. We all know the phrase, you don't know, I don't know where your hand has been. The problem is I do know where your hand has been. Probably the same kinds of places my hand has been. And this is what leads to a pandemic. So can we stop? Can we just, why can't we bow? What's wrong with the bow? Why is that wrong? There's a whole continent that does the bow. Can we do the bow? The bow makes sense to me. You acknowledge the other person's existence, but without the spread of infectious disease, what could be better than the bow? I've talked about this before. I keep harping on this. And you know what? what's happening now is, I mean, there's one guy who was like, he, reached out to my hand to shake my hand and I just didn't, he said, oh, you don't, uh, you don't shake. And I'm like, no, no, I don't. No. Pandemic. I just say pandemic and people go, oh, oh, right, right, right. How do you, for how do you forget? How do you forget? I don't understand. How do you forget? I'm doing this as I'm walking around outside. Some people think I'm either crazy or I'm talking on the phone. Then again, what does it matter what other people think? Why do I still care what other people think? Why do I still care what other people think? That is the biggest cause of pain and frustration in my life is I care what other people think. And rationally, I tell myself, have you met these other people? Are their opinions really worth that much? The things I would do if I didn't care what other people thought. I would wear a cape. I would wear a cape like Batman. but I just can't bring myself to do it. You know why? Because if I saw somebody else wearing a cape randomly for no reason other than to wear a cape, I would immediately go, they're crazy. That's a red flag. My cape would go all the way to the ground. It would have to. I don't want a cape that's only, you know, goes to the, just to the tailbone. It's got to go all the way to the ground. The cape that goes just to the tailbone, I don't know what that says. That's, that's like a sidekick cape. There's too much positivity with that cape. The cape that goes all the way to the ground, that says life is, you know, life is darkness. That's what that cape says. That cave says there's the best case scenario is a, a wistful ending with maybe a little bit of hope. That's a cave I can get behind. I'm walking uphill right now. Hope I'm still recording. Am I, I hope I'm getting this. Am I getting this? Yeah, it looks like I'm getting this. I don't know what the sound quality is going to be. I'm doing it in my AirPods. I have better equipment than this. I'm doing it in my AirPods, but I like doing it while walking. I'm also realizing that it's just so much better when I'm the when I'm the butt of the joke. That's what I keep learning. It's, it's just better when I'm the butt of the joke. I gotta keep, it's what the audience seems to like. So I've just gotta continue to be the butt of the joke. It's not that hard. I merely describe my day and that seems to be enough. I 
I want to watch science fiction tonight. I want to watch. I want to watch a, sh- a movie with a ship in it. A big ship. Big sprawling ship. It's huge. Parts of it spin. It's dirty. Sounds like I'm describing it. This should be one of the alien movies. We may need to make it an alien movie night. Big, huge, dirty, sprawling ship. You sit there and you go, how did that? How did they let that thing fly? How did they allow that to leave the space talk in that condition? I may watch it, or maybe something else. Either that or something from the 80s. I just need to feel comforted. Yes, definitely need to feel comforted. A Honda. I believe that is a Honda. Yes, it is a Honda. There you go. I found out, you know what I found out? Totally blows my mind that Honda and Kia apparently are owned by the same parent company. I did not know that. I wonder how close they are. Because, uh, like sometimes when two company, two car companies are owned by the same parent company. Like they're, they're different models from different companies, but it's actually the same car is built on the same chassis. I wonder if that's what's going on with Honda. Fascinating. Why is it that when that person told me that that it was that they're both owned by the same parent company? A part of me was thrown by it. Because I come from a Honda family. We are a Honda family. We've been, we've been on Team Honda since the 90s. Since 1990, that was the first Honda we got. And so it's, I find out that, you know, what I thought was just Honda turns out to be Honda and Kia. Why am I, why does that upset me? I mean, it doesn't upset me, but it, 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 uh, it just, it throws away everything I thought I knew. Not that it matters. I mean, if anything, I think it should be a good thing, right? I've heard good things about Honda. I've heard, I've heard good things about Kia. It sounds like this, you know, we have an ally now, right? Maybe it's because there's a part of me that there's like a loyalty to Honda. So in the past, anything that's not a Honda, whether it's Kia, whether it's Toyota, I'm like, well, it's nice, but it's it's not a Honda. And now, if Kia and Honda are part of the same company, do I, should I have been showing more respect to the Kia than I was showing before? Do I have to change how I feel about the Kia? Is, have I been giving the Kia the short shrift? Do I owe Kia an apology? That's the question. I feel like it would be good to apologize just in case. I'll apologize to the next Kia I see. I'm not seeing any Kias right now. That's a Mercedes or a BMW. I'll apologize to the next Kia I see, just to be safe. I've never said bad things about Kias. I've heard good things about Kias. Whenever I talk to somebody about a Kia, it always seems positive. I've heard good things. Maybe that should be the slogan of Kia. Kia, you've heard good things about it. Your friends have already said it's fine. What do you, what more do you need? Kia, you've heard good things. That's true, I have. Didn't think I'd be talking this long about this. 
Probably shouldn't be. But here we are. The movie I'd want to watch again is 2010, but I just watched it a couple of weeks ago, I think. Need to let some, need to be some time before I watch it again. Something nice about watching the movie with the ships where they were still using the models instead of the, instead of the ships with the, uh, now with the computers. You gotta say, you can't beat the look of those models. When they were really, you know, when they really had it figured out, building those models and filming those models. Because it was, it was Pat Oswalt who was saying this. In, in, the, in the age we're in now, as soon as my eye knows that it's a computer, I'm like, ah, it's a computer. In fact, the only time where it doesn't bother me that it's a computer, paradoxically, is when it's so obviously a computer. Like the Babylon 5 special effects, clearly a computer, but it works better, maybe, because you're not trying to hide that it's a computer. So I'm sitting there going, okay, we know it's a computer. I, now I can, in a weird way, suspend my disbelief. So there's that. I don't know if that's necessarily something entertaining. I talk about Prey yet? The Predator movie? I think I talked about Prey on the last one. I'm not going to talk about it again. What do I watch since then? What have I watched since then? Jeez. Can't, can't think of anything. I think I've been going to bed a little earlier. I've been tired. Or rather, I've been uh, getting into bed, falling asleep for an hour and a half, waking up, watching TikTok for an hour, falling back asleep, getting up in the morning, and feeling like I have not slept. That's been my routine. It's beautiful. It appears to be how things are going now. Probably time to do a, uh, a sci-fi story, right? Time for a sci-fi story? I think it's time for a sci-fi story. People are still sprinkling the lawns. The sprinklers are still happening. There's a water shortage. It's not going to happen forever. Pretty soon we're going to have to stop sprinkling the lawns. And the lawns will... could all be desert. This could all be Mad Max. And we need a Mad Max style story this time. It could be a Mad Max world where we're fighting each other with the remnants of technology. Or maybe it's a, uh, you know, not quite Mad Max, but somewhere a little bit more in between. So it's still, it's all desert. And supplies are scarce. But maybe instead of, you know, fighting each other in bloodthirsty gangs. Somehow there's still suburbs, desert suburbs. That's a possibility. And maybe instead of a lawn, you just have like different kinds of sand. You know, the Gundersons live next to the Hendersons. And the Gunderson comes out and goes, that's nice. What kind of sand is that? Oh, this is, yeah, it's uh, eastern sand. It's sand from, uh, sand from back east. Oh, that's nice. It's nice sand. Yeah. No, I, I feel the, I feel the essence of uh, New York or what was once New York. Now it's some kind of fire swamp, I believe. Now, what about you? What are you, what are you doing? Oh, this is, well, my, parents passed away they um the zombies got them 
but it was okay. I mean, they, you know, we, we saw it coming. They, we did see it coming. They lived way off on the house, way, way, way off. And the zombies, they move slowly. So, you know, they, the zombies were coming, coming for a good, I don't know how to say a good two or three months. So, you know, they had time to get their affairs in order before the zombie, the zombies came. By the way, is it zombie or mutant? I don't want to be offensive. Or do they care? I think it's... <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. It's the sand. Not used to that eastern sand. I think I might have an allergy towards it. Uh, and yeah, the, the zombies or mutants finally claim my parents and so I, I inherited some of their sand and that's what that's what's here. How are you able to get the sand without the the zombies getting you? Well by the time we got there you know the the zombies themselves had kind of given up the will to continue eating. It happens sometimes. They eat, they eat certain people and sometimes they they just lose the will to live at that point, or they, they lose the will to go on, probably because they they're not eating humans who are particularly happy to begin with. You know that in a way, zombies are just like us. It's, it's why you know you eat meat from an animal that was not treated well. You can you can taste it in the meat. The zombies have the same problem. You know, really, the best way to protect yourself from zombies is to embrace depression. And they're never going to tell you that. The government's never going to tell you that because that's not what you want to hear. But, you know, that's... There's a reason why. There's, there's entire goth communities who never have a problem with zombies. You know, the goth communities, they just, you know, keep living even though none of them really want to. Of all the communities out there that would actually prefer being eaten by zombies, it's the one community that the zombies kind of avoid. And my parents, you know, they were, they were not happy people. What do you think the temperature is going to be today? Over 200 degrees, probably. In fact, in a few minutes, I think we're both going to have to put on the, uh, the encounter suits, right? Yeah, yeah. It'll be too hot to survive out here. We're coming up with a new Spider-Man movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And but this time, they're they're going to try to set it in the modern time. So, you know, there's no buildings. There's no more skyscrapers anymore for Spider-Man to swing off of. So he uh, kind of mostly gets around by uh, by uh, Jeep. Yeah, it, it, you know, and it, it's more, it is more grounded. It's more realistic because he can't swing on anything. But there's something about Spider-Man in a Jeep that just, I don't know, it doesn't... Uh, doesn't have the same ring to it. But you know, we're, I'm, we're grateful. I mean, it could be a lot worse. This could be the Mad Max future that everyone said it was, but this, you know, it's like a mix between, I play Mad Max, it's like a mix between Mad Max and Golden Girls. You know, we, we're not fighting each other, but we're sitting around, you know, contemplating getting older and, you know, hopefully finding the humor in it. It's all that's happening. It's a problem. I like the way the eastern sand looks, but I think I've got an allergy to it. I don't think I can. Otherwise, I'd get it. It looks great. I think I got to stick with this sand. How are the kids? Oh, they're you know they're fine. They're uh, you know they're hunting for water. I think. Uh, you know, Sandra, how many people did she kill? She killed, um, I want to say, five or six people and uh, managed to evacuate their fluids and convert that into water. So she's, you know, she's doing good. She always had a knack for that. And then Ted, you know, he's, Ted's the artist. You know, he's... 
gonna go uh, go to Los Angeles. He's going to Los Angeles. Yeah, he's gonna go to Los Angeles and you know try to try to uh, get in with one of the gangs and and you know hopefully the gang will sponsor his film. That's kind of how it works now, you know, since you know Warner Brothers kind of dissolved into a gang and. And uh, Disney dissolved into a gang, and they're rival gangs now. And uh, it can get violent, but, um, you know, I still think between the two, you know, as movies go, Disney's still, you know, they, they still, they just still seem to have a better knack for franchises. You know, assuming you can, you know, survive getting into their territory. No, good for him. You know, he's following his dream. What else can you do? That's true. What else can you do? Really like that sand. Really wish I wasn't allergic to that sand. Some great sand. Well, I don't know if that was a sketch so much as a, uh, a portrait, a snapshot of life uh, six months from now. I can taste those noodles. I'm gonna have more noodles. I had uh, salad with chicken today, a couple of pieces of toast, a couple of slices of apple, some carrots. Not too shabby, right? I think that's all. Oh, and some uh, some uh, nuts and. Uh, raisins. I think they're putting extra sugar on the nuts and raisins, and I'm sort of ignoring that. I know I shouldn't be. I should probably avoid it. And I could, it would be cheaper instead of getting the, the Starbucks thing, it'd be cheaper to just get it at the store, put it in a Tupperware thing, and haul that around. But what can you do? What can you do? I think that's enough. We're about a half hour. That's good enough. I like where we're going. 27 minutes. That's, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's good.